Welcome to Mystery Bible. My name is Ken Primus. I am your host. We are looking at the life of Joseph. Uh, we are just tracking this young man as he is walking through his life and the events that take place in his life that is mentioned from several sources that we are gathering information from. And, you know, I want to always make sure that I let you guys know on the onset that I'm not here to change doctrine or anything. I just want to let you guys know um, the uh, vantage point from history that we're looking at uh, some of these stories in the Bible. But I'm pulling from different books uh, so that you and I can get a better vantage point, as I've been, I've been saying for the last year, two years now. So there's a couple of places that we are looking from and grabbing information. The works of uh, Josephus. Um, we are actually in book two. In uh, book two, we're looking at Joseph within that. And I'm going to um, take this story about Joseph in book two of Josephus. And we're also going to look at the legend of the Jews because they have a similar background or storyline within both uh, documentation that is not seen within the Bible. So some of the books that I'm gathering information from, and I suggest as you guys, uh, you can get it yourself from uh, the book, The Works of Josephus, The Book of the Asher, The Legend of the Jews is another um, piece that I'm grabbing information from. Uh, the Cedar Olam is another um, in, uh, doctrine that I use from. And um, this is actually, that was compiled in Hebrew by a Babylonian, um, yeah, I think it's 160 CE, somewhere around there, if my memory serves me right. Um, so I'm pulling from other sources so that we can get a better picture as to what was happening locally, politically, all of those other religiously that was happening in the land and the surrounding areas of the uh, people of God and the people that God was working with. So we uh, last time that we uh, were looking at uh, Joseph, we saw that um, he was promoted. He was dressed up nice. He's been everything. He's doing the, um, he's uh, he told all the people to make sure that they save grain and all this kind of stuff. The people are doing that. He is doing that. He's doing it a different way. He actually told them to bring dirt and also from where the, um, uh, where these uh, grain is growing and bring them and put them around there as well. And um, uh, as we read the story last podcast, many of them did not do that and their food rotted and now they have to come to him. He has, as a result, he was able to develop a side hustle as the young people would call it today. And he was able to make some extra money while he was doing that. He implemented a plan so that everyone now coming to get grain and to buy grain, they would have to give their name, their family name, where they're from and so forth, so that he can track when his brothers come because he opened the sale, not just to the Egyptian, but to all the surrounding areas. And from the study, as we've seen, that this um, this uh, famine wasn't localized to Egypt. It was all all the land and so people were coming from every single area to buy grain because this was the only place that had prepared for it because God showed uh, Pharaoh in the dream and he used Joseph to interpret the dream. Pharaoh put Joseph in place to prepare for it and so forth. So what we're going to do this podcast is I want to take a look at uh, this uh, theme that is being spoken in the book of, uh, in the, the Legend of the Jews and also in the works of Josephus, who is a historian of his time. And they go into a little more detail as to some of the things that took place with um, with uh, uh, Joseph as a result. One of the things that we're going to look at is his name and also some information about his wife too that I think is really interesting to have so that you and I can, again, just to know, you know, filling your mind with unnecessary information, if you will. So we're going to um, jostle back and forth between uh, Josephus' work and the legend of the Jews so that we can get some background as to uh, Joseph's name. He got a name from Pharaoh, and what does that name mean? Um, he also, his wife, he goes into her lineage so you can see where she is from. And it's a really fascinating story to see and understand that. So we're going to take a look first at the legend of the Jews. And, you know, uh, they, of course, 
will um, uh, will embellish uh, some of the stories there. But there's always that thread of truth that uh, comes into it. And I believe because it's in the book of Josephus, I believe then it uh, there's a possibility that it is a true um a true story or a true reference, if you will, as to what is going on. So let's take a look at this, and I'll bring it to your attention so that you can see it. And that's my hope. And again, we're just having fun here, uh, looking at these guys through the Bible from a different point of view. So we're looking at Joseph. After he was accompanied, Pharaoh gives him this fancy name, and um, it tells us that he got rich. And it says Pharaoh called him. It's Zephaninoth, uh Panath, is it, I think. So pardon my French, if you will, but uh, it tells us that uh, he named him this, and this is his reasoning. He who can reveal secret things with ease and rejoice the heart of men therewith. Each letter of the name means something. The first is Zeta, uh, stands for Zofred, which means seer, P-E or P-E uh, for um, Poda, means redeemer, none for Nabai, prophet, Ta for Tomek, means supporter, Pe for Potter, means interpreter of dreams, M for Aram, clever, none uh, for Nebon which means discreet, and hef for hakam, which means wise. And again, we're taking from the uh, the book from uh, this information from the legend of the Jews. So now let's take a look at Ashnath's wife and see what it says here. The name of Joseph's wife pointed to her history in the same way. Ashnath was the daughter of Dinah, and Hamor, but she was abandoned at the borders of Egypt, only that people might know who she was. Jacob engraved the story of her patronage um, and her birth upon a gold plate fastened around her neck. So we're getting some information here as to who, according to the legend of the Jews, the, the day of which Asnath was exposed, Potiphar went walking in with his servants near the city wall, and they heard the voice of a child. At the captain's bidding, they brought the baby to him, and when he read her history from the gold plate, he determined to adapt to adopt her. He took her home with him and raised her as his daughter. Uh, the elf in Ashnath stand for On, uh, where Potiphar was priest, the Samek for Satyria, hidden, for she was kept concealed on account of her extraordinary beauty. The nun for Nomath, uh, for she wept and entreated that she might be delivered from the house of the heathen Potiphar. And the Ta for Tamara, the perfect one, on account of her pious, perfect deeds. Eshnet had saved Joseph's life while she was still an infant in arms. When Joseph was accused of immoral conduct by Potiphar's wife and the other woman, the other women, and his master was on the point of having him hang, Ashnath, this uh, young child, approached her foster father, and she assured him on the oath that the charge against Joseph was false. Then God spake, um, and uh, then spake God, as thou livest, because thou didst try to defend Joseph, you shall be the woman to bear the tribes that he is appointed to beget. And Ashnath bore him two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, during the seven years of plenty, for in a time of famine Joseph refrained from all in, 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 indulgence in the pleasures of life. They were uh, bred in chastity and the fear of God for their father, and they were wise and well instructed in knowledge and in the affairs of state so that they became the favorites of the court and were educated with the royal princes. And so we know from the book of uh, Yasher that these kids spent time and they grew up with those kids in the court and they were considered wise. So um, this is from the uh, the vantage point of the uh, legend of the Jews about his name and his wife's name and their lineage um, as to uh, in reference to what how Pharaoh saw him and how she was from where the Jews saw her. So now let's take a look at Josephus about this same uh, kind of um, uh, reference, if you will, about this particular incident. Joseph was grown up uh, to... He was 30 years old 
and enjoy great honor from the king who called him um, Hussein uh, Fanet, uh, out of regard to his uh, uh, degree of wisdom, then the name denotes revealer of secrets, and we went through all of that. And it says he also married a wife of very high quality, for he married the daughter of Het to us. And so it tells us that this guy was a priest, and his, his wife was a virgin, and her name, as we know, was Asenat. Uh, by her, he had children before the uh, scarcity came on. So this is before the famine hit. He has these kids, Manasseh, uh, the elder, which signifies forgetful because his present happiness made him forget his former misfortune. And Ephraim, the younger, which signified restored because he was restored to the freedom of his forefathers. Now, after Egypt had happily passed over seven years, according to Joseph's interpretation of the dream, the famine came upon them in the eighth year, and because of this, misfortune fell upon them when they had no sense of it beforehand. And they were all sorely afflicted by it, and it came running to the king's gate, and he called upon Joseph, who sold the corn to them being um, become confessedly a savior of the whole multitude of the Egyptians, nor did he open the market of corn to different countries and so forth. So uh, this is the piece that I wanted to um, talk to you guys. That's the first part of it. We're showing that uh, of uh, Joseph. And again, the Bible doesn't go into any of this type of stuff. But this story here is what I wanted to focus on in the second book in um, of Josephus. We are looking in chapter 6, and we are now in paragraph 2. Now Jacob also, when he was understood that foreigners might come, he sent his sons into Egypt to buy corn, for the land of Canaan was grievously afflicted with the, with the famine, and a great misery touched the whole continent. He also re retained Benjamin, who was born to him by Rachel, and was a mother of Joseph. So this is talking about uh, Jacob. So we see in the last one, uh, the last podcast, this is basically where we stopped, where Joseph uh, told his brothers, I need you guys to get in there, go to Egypt, and to get us uh, some, um, you know, get us some grain. So uh, we see then that they are, uh, and we talked about them leaving, and going on to um, to buy the grain. So let's take a look and see what happens as uh, what I'm trying to show you here. With uh, when the children, when this famine hit and it came, and the, the children of uh, um, the Egyptian went into their barns to get their stuff, their food, as it said, it was spoiled. And according to the book of um, uh, Yasher, they went to Pharaoh, complained. Pharaoh said, "I got nothing to do with this. I put someone in charge. Go talk to him, he, he, Joseph, and heal, and just listen to him and do whatever he says." So. Um, it tells us that uh, now they're gone to him, and thus they were driven to apply to Joseph and beseech his help. And he admonished them, saying, Give up your alliance to your deceitful idols, and say, Bless is he who giveth bread unto all flesh. So they're coming to him now and um, telling him that uh, they want their food, but he makes a demand on them as to their belief system. It says, give up your allegiance to your deceitful God, or your deceitful idols, and say, blessed is he who giveth bread unto all flesh. But they refuse, the Egyptian refused, and they, uh, to deny their lying gods, and they be betook themselves to Pharaoh, only to be told by him, go on to Joseph, go back to him, and whatever he says to do, you do. For this Pharaoh was rewarded. God granted him long life and a long reign until he became arrogant and well-merited punishment overtook him. When the Egyptian approached Joseph with the petition for bread, he spoke, saying, I gave I give no food to the uncircumcised. <laughs> Go hence and circumcise yourself and then return to me. They entered the presence of Pharaoh and complained to him regarding Joseph. But he said as before, go on to Joseph. And they replied, Who, we came from Joseph and he had spoken roughly unto us saying, go hence and circumcise yourself. We warned thee in the beginning that he is a Jew or a Hebrew and would treat us in such wise. Pharaoh said to them, 
O you fools, did he not prophesy through the Holy Spirit and proclaim to the whole world that there were come seven years of plenty to be followed the seven years of, of threat? Why did you not save your yield one or two years against this day of your seed? Reaping, they made reply, the grain that we put aside during the good years have rotted, Pharaoh replies. Have you nothing over the flower of years? The Egyptians, the very bread in the basket, rotted, Pharaoh, why? The Egyptians, because Joseph willed it that way. Pharaoh answers, O oh, you fools, if his words has power over the grain, making it rot when he desire it to rot. Then also we die, if so be his wish concerning us. Go therefore unto him, and do as he bids you. So, from this story we are looking here in the um, legend of the Jews, we are seeing that um, Joseph is making an entire nation um, the Egyptian nation, uh, anyone that wants to buy anything from him, as far as grain or anything, he's making these men circumcise themselves before he gives them anything. And um, we see that uh, right after that, we see that's when it tells us that he instituted the guards so that the guards can start collecting the information so that he can get a chance to meet his brothers and to see when they're coming into the uh, into the city to buy um, you know uh, the uh, the grain so that he can uh, dress them and uh, so what we're going to do is go back into um, we're going to go back into uh, uh, the book of Yasher and we're going to pick up there and see all of the different uh, stories and where it leads us as these guys are coming to get food or grain so that they don't starve but not knowing that their brother is actually second to Pharaoh in the land of Egypt of all places. Uh, so that's uh, going to be some good stuff. We know in the last uh, um, podcast we addressed the Tarshish war, war that they had when um, Joseph and his guys came in, uh, they subdued them, and um, none of his people died, and they were all, uh, you know, they all made it back home, if you will. So uh, we know, as I mentioned, let's uh, take it up from there, and um, we are in chapter 51, and it talks uh, about Joseph now sending his uh, sons to go to Egypt to buy some bread, and we know some, some corn and so forth, and wheat, and all the different uh, grain that they needed. And we see that these guys were still, as I said early in the last one, they were still kind of messed up of uh, what they did with their brothers. So this uh, is he when he when they did that to him, he was a young man. I know he was in his teens when um, Potiphar's wife had uh, harassed him. She harassed him for a year. He was nineteen, I think, around there. Now he's in his thirties, and these guys, man, are still messed up about him because, as we see, it tells us. Uh, um, in chapter 51, uh, verses uh, 6, where we left off the last time. And whilst the son of Joseph, Jacob, were going to the road, they repented for what they had done to Joseph, and they spoke to each other, saying, We know that our brother Joseph went down to Egypt, and now we will seek him where he goes. And if we find him, we will take him from his masters for ransom, and if not by force, and we will die for him. So now they're concerned. They know that he's here in Egypt, and they are trying to see if they can get him back. And the sons of Jacob agreed to this thing, and strengthened themselves on account of Joseph to deliver him from the hands of his master. And the sons of Jacob went to Egypt. And when they came there to Egypt, they separated from one another, and they came through ten gates of Egypt. And the gatekeepers wrote their names on that day and brought them to Joseph in the evening. So in the early morning, these guys showed up, or somewhere in the time of, uh, in the daytime, in the evening, he knows that they're there. And Joseph read the names from the, hand, from the hand of the gatekeeper of the city, and he found that his brothers had entered the ten gates of the city. And Joseph at that time commanded that it should be proclaimed throughout the land of Egypt, saying, Go forth all you store guards, close all the corn stores, and let only one 
remain open and thus they did according to him so now we're seeing some information because we wanted to know how are these people coming from all over the world at the time the whole continent as it says we read earlier that uh, they're coming from 10 gates so they had 10 gates open and uh, they were able to maintain or handle the crowds of people coming to the city to purchase their uh, grain. So he recognizes that his brothers came through all 10 gates, they split up, and he sends out a decree, if you will, and um, it came to pass. And um, uh, once that decree is uh, spoken and released from his mouth, it must be completed. And that's one of the principles that we'll read in the Bible. Um, you'll read in, in I think, um, in Job, and he says, decree a thing, but that, um, and you guys have heard me talk about it, that word that they um, translated decree is wrong. It says to decide a thing, and it shall be established. And we see this principle here with this ruler, the second in command in the land of Egypt. He decided that he did not want any other gate open and because he decided it he declared it and so he in order for something to come to pass it's a principle whether you're a christian or not it doesn't matter it is a human principle once the human being decide a thing and they are settled within themselves about it they become focused and their faith becomes visible why because immediately what you do is you begin to speak and release words of authority, words of power to decree a thing. The scripture says the principle is that once you have decided on something and then you decree it, it shall come to pass. And so those of you that are decided that, hey, I want to be a doctor and you decided, you decreed it, and then you take, you took the following the necessary steps to obtain the, what you decided or what you decreed. And everyone that is living a circular life is there simply because you haven't decided what you want. You need to decide what you want first. And once you have made a concrete decision within yourself, and you'll know when you get there, you also will know when you're playing with, it, with yourself and you're not serious about it. And that's why you're still will be circular, because you're not serious about it. But when you have made a decision um, not to be circular, not to go through this um, cycle over and over, once you've made that decision, you will then implement, you will decree, you will say, I am going to do this, I need to do this, and then you're going to implement the plan by which you need to obtain that decision that you have just made. And we see this here in this presentation with Joseph when he told the people, he decided that he wanted one gate to be open, and he decreed it, and it was done. So we see that um, in verse 10, and all the officers of Joseph did so at the time, and they closed all the stores and left only one open. And Joseph gave the written names of his brothers to him and was set over the open store. And he said unto him, Whosoever shall come to you to buy corn, ask his name. And when men of these names shall come before you, seize them and send them. And um, they did so. So he's now setting them up. He said, these are the names that I want you guys to look for. When you hear these names, grab those men, bring them to me. And so, um, and when the sons of Jacob came into the city, they journeyed together in the city to seek Joseph before they brought themselves corn. So they got in and they started to look for Joseph. And they went to the walls of the harlots and they saw Joseph in the walls of the harlots for three days. No kidding. Uh, for they thought that Joseph would come in the walls of the harlot, for Joseph was very comely and well favored, and the sons of Jacob thought saw Jake Joseph uh, for three days, and they could not find him. So they figured because he's good looking, he would be with all the women and so forth. And the man who sat over the open store sought those, the names of jo uh, which Joseph had given him and did not find them. And when he sent to Joseph saying, these three days have passed and these men whose name you have given unto us have not come. And Joseph sent servants to seek the men in all Egypt and to bring them before Joseph. And Joseph's servants went and came into Egypt and could not find them. And when the Goshen and they 
were not there, and they went to the city of, of Ramses and could not find them. And Joseph continued to send 16 servants to seek his brothers, and they went and spread themselves in the four corners of the city, and the uh, and four of the servants went into the house of the harlots, and they found uh, ten men that were seeking their brother. And those four men took them and brought them before him, and they bowed down to him to the ground. And Joseph was sitting upon his throne in his temple, clothed with princely garment, and upon his head was a large crown of gold, and all the mighty men were sitting around him. And the sons of J Jacob saw Joseph and his figure and comeliness and dignity of countenance seemed uh, wonderfully in their eyes. And they began again to bow down to him to the ground. Remember his dream that uh, they would, he saw them doing this. And so here we, here we go. And um, again, when you're reading the word of God and when you're reading anything um, like the book of Yasher and the Jubilees, the Bible, the mighty men, these were men of renown. They're called, um, uh, these were mighty warriors. These were a men that can fight, man. These boys were mad. And we saw that uh, Jacob's son took out a lot of them. And uh, we see that uh, Joseph had hundreds of thousands of men around him. And uh, big boys were sitting with him when his brothers show up. And Joseph saw his brethren and he knew them. But they knew him not. For Joseph was very great in their eyes. Therefore, they knew him not. Yeah, of course, you're not going to, um, you know. Uh, uh, think he <laughs> that that's their brother, um, but according to the previous verse, we saw that it, it, it kind of looked at him, kind of you know, trying to figure him out. But again, he was a young man; he is now in his thirties. So, yeah, of course, there are going to be some differences, and uh, they may not recognize him as a man um, now when he comes before them. So he sees his brothers, and he knows. He knows who they are. They don't know him in verse 20. Verse 21, and Joseph spoke to them saying, From where did you come? And they all answered and said, Your servants have come from the land of Canaan to buy corn. For the famine prevailed throughout the earth. And they servant uh, heard, and your servants heard that there was corn in Egypt. So they have come amongst the other comers to buy corn for their support. And Joseph answered them saying, If you have come to purchase, as you say, why do you come through ten gates? of the city. It can only be that you have come to spy throughout the land. And they all together answered Joseph and said, Not so, my lord. We are right. Your servants are not spies, but we have come to buy corn. For your servants are all brothers, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And our father commanded us, saying, When you come to the city, do not enter together at one gate on one account of the inhabitants of the land. And Joseph again answered them and said, that is the thing which I say unto you. You have come to spy throughout the land. Therefore, you all come through the ten gates of the city. You have come to see the nakedness of the land. Surely everyone that cometh to buy corn goeth his way. And you are already three days in the land. And what did you do in the walls of the harlot in which you have been for these three days? Surely spies do like unto think these things. And they said unto Joseph, Far be it from us, our Lord, to speak thus. For we are twelve brothers, the sons of our father Jacob, in the land of Canaan, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the Hebrew. And behold, the youngest is with our father in this day in the land of Canaan, and the one is not, for he was lost from us. And we through thought perhaps he might be in this land. So we are seeking him throughout the land, and have come even to the house of the harlot to seek him there. And Joseph said unto them, And have you then sought him throughout the earth, that there only remain? Egypt for you to seek him in? And what also should your brother do in the house, uh, the houses of the harlot? Although he were in Egypt, you, <laughs> uh, have you not said that you are from the sons of Isaac, the sons of Abraham? And what shall the sons of Jacob do to them in the house of harlot? And they said unto him, Because we heard that Ishmaelites stole him from us, and it was told unto us that they sold him into Egypt, and your servant, our brother, is very comely and well favored, so we thought he would surely be in the house of the harlot. Therefore your servants went there to seek him, and give him ransom for him. And Joseph said unto them, 
saying, Surely you speak falsely and utter lies. To say of yourself that you are the sons of Abraham, as fair liveth, you are spies. Therefore have you come to the houses of the harlot, that you should not be known. And Joseph said unto them, And now if you find him, and his master required of you a great price, will you give it for him? And they said, It shall be given. And he said unto them, And if his master will not consent to part of him for a great price, what will you do unto him on his account? And they answered him, saying, If he will not give him unto us, we will slay him and take our brother and go away. And Joseph said unto them, That is the thing which I have spoken to you. You are spies, for you are come to slay the inhabitants of the land. For we heard that two of your brothers smote all the inhabitants of the session in the land of Canaan on account of your sister. And you now come to do the like to Egypt on the account of your brother. Only hereby shall I know that you are true men. If you will send home one from amongst you to fetch your youngest brother from your father and to bring him here unto me. And by doing this, I will know that you are right. And Joseph called the seventy of his mighty men and said unto them, Take these men and bring them into the war. And the mighty men took the ten men that laid hold of them and put them into the ward. And they were in the ward for three days. And on the third day Joseph had, had them brought out of the ward. And he said unto them, Do this yourself, if you be true men, so that you may live. One of your brethren shall be confined in the ward whilst you go and take home the corn for your household to the land of Canaan, and fetch your youngest brother and bring him here unto me, that I may know that you are true men when you do this thing. And Joseph went out from them and came into the chamber, and he wept a great weeping, for his pity was excited of them. And he washed his face and returned to them again, and he took Simeon from them and ordered him to be bound. But Simeon was not willing to be done so, for he was a very powerful man, and they could not bind him. And Joseph called unto his mighty men, and seventy valiant men came before him with drawn sword, and their hands, and the sons of Jacob were terrified of them. And so I tell you, these men who were big, giant men, um, the mighty men um, in the old days, and they showed up. 70 of them, but remember these guys, the sons of Jacob, they were killing them and fighting them um, in many wars before. But here it tells us that the sons of Jacob were terrified of these men. So for these men that killed giants, to be terrified by these 70 men, it must tell you something. If we studied also how they uh, destroyed many of them, uh, Joseph talked about session. There were giants there. There were giants in several, um, uh, we studied the wars, actually, um, of the sons of Jacob. They were in wars for several years against many different nations and people, and the majority of them were giants, as we saw. So the 70 men came around them. They were terrified, and Joseph said unto them, Seize this man and confine him in prison until his brother come to him. And Joseph, the valiant man, hastened, and they all laid hold of Simeon to bind him, and Simeon gave a loud and terrible shriek and the cry was heard at a distance and all the valiant men of Joseph were terrified at the sound of the shriek and they fell upon their face and they were greatly afraid and fled so remember I told you about these guys man and you remember Simeon and all of them this is how they would uh, did that scream or whatever that was that caused these mighty men to shrink back but let's keep reading because this is going to get really really good and uh, uh, all the men that were Joseph fled, and they were greatly afraid of their life. And only Joseph and Manasseh, his son, remained there. And Manasseh, the son of Joseph, saw the strength of Simeon, and he was exceedingly angry. And Messiah and Manasseh, the son of Joseph, rose up to Simeon, and Manasseh smote Simeon a heavy blow with his fist against the back of his neck. And Simeon was still of his rage. And Manasseh told, laid hold of Simeon, and seized him violently, and he bound him and brought him into the house of confinement. And all the sons of Jacob were astonished at the act of the youth. So here's this young man. That's why um, I love reading different vantage points, because you get to see some other stuff that is happening, and we get to see the, the interaction of this young man um, with his uncle. So he uh, doesn't know that this is his uncle at the time, 
But uh, Joseph's son, Manasseh, was able, as a young man, able to bring his uh, uncle down who the giants flew from. So these were some bad boys, if you will. And so um, he brings him to the uh, to the jail, basically, single-handedly, and uh, uh, locked him up. And uh, um, they, it tells us that they were astonished at him. And Simeon said unto his brethren, None of you must say that this is the smiting of the Egyptian, but it is the smiting of the house of our father. And after this, Joseph ordered him to be called who was set over the storehouse to fill their sacks of corn as much as they could carry and to restore every man's money in his sack and to give them provision for the road. And thus did he unto them. And Joseph commanded them, saying, Take heed, these you transgress my order, to bring your brother as I have told you, and it shall be when you bring your brother hither unto me. Then I will know that you are true men, and you shall uh, traffic through the land, and I will restore unto you your brother, and you shall return in peace to your father. And they all answered and said, According as our Lord speaketh, so we will do. And they bowed down to him to the ground, and every man lift up his corn upon his ass. And they went out to the ground of the Canaan and their father, and they came unto the inn, and Levi spread his neck his sack to give the uh, provender to his ass when he saw and behold his money his full weight was still in his sack so he noticed something different and the man was greatly afraid and he said unto his brethren my money is restored and lo it is even in my sack and the men were greatly afraid and they said unto him what is this that god has done unto us so uh, the money that uh, was used to buy the grain they put it back into his um, his wallet if you will. And so um, they're gone. They see this and the man was there became afraid and they said unto his brother, my money is restored and lo, it is even in my sack. And the men were greatly afraid and they said, what is it that God has done unto us? And they all said, and where is the Lord's kindness with our fa fathers, eh, with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, that the Lord has this day delivered us into the hands of the king of Egypt to contrive against us. And Judah said unto them, Surely we are guilty sinners before the Lord our God in having sold our brother, our flesh, our own flesh. And wherefore you do say, Where is the Lord's kindness with our fathers? And Reuben said unto them, Said I not unto you, Do not sin against the lad, and you would not listen to me now. God requires him from us, and how dare you say, Where is the Lord's kindness with our fathers? Will you have sinned? whilst you have sinned against God. And they tarried over the night in that place. They rose up early in the morning and laid their asses with their corn, and they led them and went on and came to their father's house in the land of Canaan. And Jacob and his household went out to meet his son. And Jacob saw that, behold, their brother Simeon was not with them. And Jacob said unto his sons, Where is your brother Simeon, whom I do not see? And his sons told him all that had befallen them in Egypt. That is the end of chapter 51 and uh, we are going to pick it up um, next week in 52 and we're going to again look at the other sources as well um, to gather some information. Um, I just wanted to finish it here because I know I don't want to um, impose much on your time but I was having a lot of fun with it. I just wanted to show you that it was Manasseh that handled his uncle uh, Simeon and uh, made sure that he he was able to um, subdue him as his father requested and put him in prison, if you will. So I want to thank you guys for following me. Happy New Year again to all of you. I'm excited about this year. This is 2023, guys. Let's do something with it. Let's change the trajectory of our family, our lives, so that we can become happier in the things that we do, how we operate on this planet, because our time is short, 50, 60 years, 100 years is short in comparison to eternity and the life beyond. This is just the beginning. There is another journey once we shed the body. But I want to thank you for coming and following. And I am so excited. Spread the word about us. Those that are listening to us on uh, uh, YouTube and all the different um, channels out there, just like, subscribe, uh, share so that uh, we can grow the channel and um, uh, learn who we are so that we can study the word and become effective and change this world.